Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today we are in the sunny, no, maybe not so sunny, city of Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, we are here to honor and talk about our friend Thomas Breeze Marcus. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I know uh, you're, you're, the name we go by these days is Breeze, and uh, that's his artistic name. That's the, the name that he's earned and used on, on the streets here in, in uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale area. Uh, Breeze is a native of the Tohono O'odham tribe. Um, I guess in old days we would call that the Pima tribe. Would Pima you say and that? Pa- Pima and Papago. Pima and called. Papago. Yeah. And um, his tribe was really known for um, their basketry and their weavings. They were some of the best weavers out there as far as basketry. There, there's some amazing uh, baskets out there. You can see them in most uh, native museums like the Heard Museum or the Museum of Indian Art and Culture or any of the native museums all the way to the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian. Welcome, Breeze. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's good to see you guys. It's more like you're having us here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is your hood and stuff. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's good. Um, and I, I think that's appropriate. Absolutely. I've been wanting to interview uh, Breeze like this for many months. Uh, actually, it's one of the first people I thought about doing this in podcast. Uh, Breeze has a wonderful story. Um, his impact on the community here in Arizona and and now is becoming more national is growing. And uh, we're going to let him talk a little bit about himself. So, Breeze, mostly, like, introduce yourself to our audience. Like, who are you? Where did you come? And what are you doing now? Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me once again. I'm really happy to do this. Um, So, like we were saying, my name is Thomas Breeze Marcus, but my nickname is Breeze. Most everybody knows me as Breeze. I grew up just east of here on the Salt River Pima Maricopa Reservation, which is uh, related to the Thano Atom, but it, uh, uniquely own, uh, u- uniquely its own, uh, in the traditional name referred to as the Akimero Atom, which would have been the river people, because we lived right here next to the river. But uh, so I grew up there via like downtown Phoenix and uh, a neighborhood in West Phoenix called Maryville. And I really got, I think I was always one of those people that was an artist even as a kid mm-hmm. you know picking up uh, uh sketch pads and things like that a little more advanced beyond uh, uh coloring books which is totally cool too mm-hmm. but uh, i would say in the teen years is when i discovered uh, graffiti art and uh, what everybody knows now is street art uh, had a very specific upbringing with that and very um uh, uh, as we all say from that world, a different school of alternative school of art, you know, mm-hmm. or school of hard knocks, as they say. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the beginnings of that. Yeah, so the the graffiti uh, subculture that everybody kind of knows more popularly as street art around the world, made famous by people like Shepard Ferry and Banksy, uh, a few other names, really big names. Uh, to us, it was always graffiti writing. And we called ourselves uh, writers or graffiti writers. And we were heavily inspired by, uh, like a lot of big cities, uh, we were closer to Los Angeles, so we were heavily influenced by Los Angeles. Los Angeles, However, it all stemmed from graffiti writing from the subway trains in New York in the 70s and the 80s. And then, of course, as though those that might be aware, uh, other people who were involved at the time, you could call them the godfathers of street art, graffiti art, uh, that made that kind of name and style famous in their own way, which would have been Jean-Michel Basquiat and Keith Haring. Mm -hmm. Uh, So my experience here in Phoenix, I think, is uniquely uh, uh, different, though, because I grew up on the reservation in the city at the same time. And I really got heavily involved with a lot of uh, unsanctioned art, uh, I think is the best way to say it, because that's what graffiti is. That's what graffiti is. Rooted in rebellion, rooted in in going against the grain, (coughs) but uh, keeping that human spirit of human ingenuity and being creative and so it was definitely a a, a, a bridging the gap of, of of understanding that well this is what we've always been doing as native people as indigenous folks mm-hmm. and finding it in this contemporary very raw you know diamond in the rough type of way but very valuable and experience and what what I gained out of that and then fast forwarding into understanding those 
bridgings of the gap and understanding my culture a lot better and where I came from and those influences. It seems like a natural setting for natives in general because if you think about petroglyphic art, right? Isn't that like a format in the sense of graffiti in, in the way historic? <laughs> yeah. Prehistoric ways. And so it's, it's something that has existed. Yeah, I've always thought of, uh, and uh, I'm going to spill, spill the beans on, on an idea that if there were ever a history of graffiti of Phoenix to be done at a local institution, whether that's a museum or what, you can go back as far as those petroglyphs, oh, um, yeah. which are our ancestors on these mountains here. Um, and I always think about that now, especially nowadays when I'm painting a community mural or whatever it is, I'm thinking about those people for sure. So um, think about the ancestors. So they're, they're, they're doing their mural art on petroglyphs or on rocks. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> what's your point of doing graffiti? Is it the same? Is, are you trying to send a message? Because um, sometimes they're documenting spiritual things or sometimes everyday life too. Right. Absolutely. Well, you you hit the nail on the head earlier, and I'm gonna. I wanted to elaborate more on that about um, at least what in the last couple hundred years, what our our people here, my my tribes have been known for, which is the basket weaving, and um, what uh, we we although we're known for that, we have such a longer history with artwork besides that, and a lot of it not is is definitely the petroglyphs and how they were basically documenting life uh, here in the desert and understanding the, uh, the cycles of life and documenting the stars and the sun and movements and agricultural and things like that. Ways to be sustainable and to be a, 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 a culture that can survive in this harsh environment. But also beyond that, um, types of old style of pottery and jewelry that aren't done anymore, they, that, that sort of stopped around a certain time if anybody watching this wants to learn more if you really want to understand how deep the art history goes here in the valley uh start studying the 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 uh the whole um, the whole um, which would be right up there along the lines with uh uh the the ancestral uh puebloan i think is that how you say it or yeah not like saying the, the, hopi, anasazi anymore? the hopi anasazi yeah that type of era yeah it's old so a lot of people don't know that here in phoenix <coughs> the whole um that's our ancient history here. Um, that's our ancestors, and they were producing high-quality artworks back then, and using it for for commerce and trade, and they were, had high value. So, to understand all of that, the petroglyphs, the pottery, the shell jewelry, the weaving, now in modern day, 2021, and for the last 30 years of me doing this, I, I understand. The importance of the narrative that i'm putting on a wall uh, maybe it's different than when i started and just writing my name and being a punk kid running around now it's important for me to be very mindful of what i put on a wall and if it has some sort of symbolism or hints of of symbolism from our, our cultures but as well as my obvious signature style that i've developed on my own for the last two decades um it's really important for me to 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 pay honor and respect to the continuum that is us and uh, <clears throat> not just respect but also educating the future right absolutely because um I, I would assume that your your tribal uh language is not written right for the most part like most right so it's handed down verbally or mm -hmm. pictorially right absolutely yeah. so that's an important thing to think about uh the preservation of culture and the native uh idioms is through either that either voice or or picture and that's the way you educate you know, the next generations <clears throat> and uh, I, was, I had a good interview the other day with uh, Stetson Hanyamtawa from uh, Hopi and it's the same thing mm. but they use dolls and stuff to teach and stuff but yeah. it's it's not written so it's just a re repetition yeah but in petroglyphic or you know, you're writing stuff on the walls. It's the same thing. You, mm -hmm. you have some type of education. So how would you describe your uh, style of art, like culturally? What do, you, what do you, what, what's the main thing about it? So for the last two, get, two decades that I've been really specifically focusing on, on developing this, this style, it started with developing the style first and then figuring out the content afterwards. And now it's it's 
become the last few years putting all of that together like mm-hmm. a puzzle. But I would say that the biggest influences for me are, are definitely my personal experiences in, in this in this life with graffiti art and everything that I understand about that um, and have experienced. But also knowing my, my history, which I'm extremely thankful for that I grew up in and grew up around and knowing all of those those stories and how they're passed down, how we interact culturally and are able and have been able to save a lot of that when we all know the history of you don't have to get into that, but the history of Native people in this country and how a lot of us were almost eradicated along with those stories. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's it's always, those are the two main ones. And with the freedom of being an artist, right, I can pick and choose and, and like just adjusting the frequencies on a painting when I, when I have other influences or what I'm talking about and the dialogue that I'm creating in that piece. So and I think the thing that I'm also trying to get at here is the the main source of your graffiti is inspired by your your tribe but mostly by the weaving right yeah so tell us a little bit about that so the the style that i've come up with this very intricately woven pattern design i refer to just as the line work that's sort of the name i've given it i understood early on that within basket making it's exactly that it's weaving and and having these different patterns uh come together by uh, patience and thought process and all of that. And at one point, I, I realized I could do something very similar, but with a whole new fresh idea and approach by taking my graffiti lettering and typography experience and starting to abstract that and, and allowing it to grow and interweave and to have those stories interwoven into those paintings in that way. How we always say, I think every tribe can say this, I feel like we all have this universal truth about us where we say we're all connected in some way and in those paintings that's a constant thing that i'm always thinking about is the connection of us uh, and people into the to the worlds around us and to the worlds that we can't see and all these other how these stories relate so it's just it's a combination of a lot of different things but as far as that goes it's the direct connection of basket weaving that has really inspired uh one of the biggest uh, uh reasons why i move forward with this yeah I've noticed when uh, when I first met you, a lot of your, your work was just pure line work, mm-hmm. like the weave mm-hmm. that you're describing. And you've evolved into so many different areas at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've collaborated with other street artists. And, yeah. uh, you've also gone into uh, digital imagery. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about that migration. Yeah, so I think it goes back to to me understanding early on uh, uh, 20 years ago that I was cracking the code of of trying to develop something new um, and I knew I needed to get good at that first before I could put all these other things together and so going down that path of, of creating just pattern based concepts with nothing else being influenced by it uh, trying to keep it as pure as possible that was the main goal for, for many years 10 years as they say I think it you know, whoever they are, uh, it takes 10 years to get good at one thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I was striving for at that point in time. Um, And then obviously growing and maturing as a person, uh, as a human being, uh, trying to be considerate of of how I'm moving forward. Then allowing myself or understanding that I can allow myself to to open up and be free to incorporate whatever I want and and, and approaching uh, concepts and ideas, whether it's a canvas or wall, with with many different influences and right now what i've been working on is a lot of digital work which is i i never thought i would do digital work it's at pretty all. cool it's, man. it's Some cool good stuff. yeah no it's it's cool for me to to dive into it because i was one of those people i couldn't i didn't know how to use photoshop five years ago you know? <laughs> <laughs> what else i have to, I have to ask somebody that was good at that but now i'm there are far better programs that are easy to navigate through and, and just amazing at the technology so uh i know that that is something that I'm very interested in now. And I see the endless possibilities of lending my style of work and breaking out of two dimensional form and into whether it's three dimensional sculptures, something like I have plenty of ideas. So it's going to be a long road to try and go. It might be another 10 years before I get to that. I'm excited. But I have for a you. lot of ideas. So I'm maybe again spilling the beans a little too early, but 
the, mm. the brain is working up there for I, sure. I see where you're headed. <laughs> so um, one of the, the great things that I love about uh, Breeze is his community outreach, and we need to talk about that. So before COVID, uh, when the world was a lot different, my myself uh, and another good friend of mine who was a, a autumn artist, um, and even before I met him, uh, I've been actively involved in trying to work in my community that I grew up in here in Salt River and other communities when possible around the state. But uh, about 10 years ago, we started this this program that was, uh, I don't want to call it an outreach program, but it was an art-based, mural-based program for the kids in our community. And uh, we were able to get them for summer breaks and other times in between spring break and things like that and, and do uh, uh, something that would really catch their interest where they knew that they were going to be learning sp learning and using spray paint, mm -hmm. which uh, I think any kid probably likes the sound of that idea. Yeah. <laughs> But what, what our main objective was, was to not only introduce them to something like that, that is new, that they can relate to, um, but also start off with almost like a timeline of history of where they come from. If And some of them definitely knew and know that history. But unfortunately, there's there's a lot of us who don't grow up with a lot of that stuff, you yeah. know, depending on our household situation, you know, what, you know, there's, I could go through a list of scenarios, uh, but I won't. Um, yeah, we wanted to make sure that we were letting them know who they are and then it's okay to know that who they are and where they come from, but also that it's okay to be who they are now in 2000, what, you know, back then it would have been 2010, 11 and so on. But we really wanted to give that inspiration to them to know that, that not only could they hear all of that and try to find uh, some empowerment within that in knowing that they can exist in these multiple worlds that native people always talk about walking in two different worlds or multiple worlds because that is kind of a difficult thing for some. Yeah. But we also really wanted to uh, inspire them and motivate them to show them a living example of people that have taken these experiences and done something with it uh, uh, and now giving back to the community. Yeah. So. I know, um, you know, Blue Rain used to have a gallery here in Scottsdale for six years. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'd always come through the <clears throat> North Beeline Highway there in uh, through the Res uh, Indian School Road. Yeah. And there, there's a couple of your pieces there. Yeah. There, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Integrated with some of the local community as well. And yeah. I, I'm very impressed with that. I, I really appreciate that about you, Breeze. Um, you. Tell us about the latest um, experience you had with the Phoenix Suns. Oh, yeah. So, uh, this last this last project I did with the Phoenix Suns, uh, I actually did two projects this past year, um, but this last one got a lot of attention. Back in November, during Native American Heritage Month, Phoenix Suns uh, did good on wanting to do a a one night where they designated a game that was Native American Heritage Night, and uh, they had reached out to me and had asked because we we've worked together before. This was the fourth project I think we've worked on in the last couple of years. And the second this year, but they had asked me to design this this T-shirt uh, design for the night, and it was really cool because I felt like that they understood that they were reaching out to me, uh, and we and we talked about it. They were reaching out to me because Phoenix is on Autumn land. Yeah. There, this is Akimit Autumn, Don Autumn, and and the land of our ancestors, the Hulagam or Hulagam, and knowing that. It, were, it made sense to create a design that was influenced with a basket and then as well as my work and then having the sun's uh, classic lettering at the bottom uh, and people went crazy for it. I mean, I'm, I, I know there, I'm sure there were individuals that just wanted those limited edition shirts, no, you know, yeah. like my, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he, he got one. He went to the game, but, uh, oh, nice. uh, but with that being said, uh, it was great because they, you know, gave me a lot of press. They really, uh, really uh, showcased not only myself, but I. I felt, and this is in, in the greater, in the bigger picture, uh, acknowledging our people here as being the original folks. I don't think you could look at your image and not credit your heritage because it's all over it. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, what a what a beautiful thing! I was pretty. I, I think I was watching that game. I, I saw your imagery on the jumbotron. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man! Isn't yeah. that cool? That was a nice surprise. Oh well, I knew they were going to do that, but they told me that it was going to be halftime, and instead they aired that during first quarter. Next thing I'm looking up, I'm like, oh damn, there, there I am! And, <laughs> like kind of like a deer in oh, headlights. Oh man, that's better than the kiss cam. <laughs> the kiss cam. The kiss cam, man. It's better than the kiss cam. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a cool experience, though, and uh, I'm really thankful to the Suns for that. Yeah, and real quick, like I was saying, that was the second project, and before that, we had done something uh, where I did a permanent painting for their collections that is actually in the arena earlier in the year, based upon exactly what we just talked about, the heritage of the valley and the original uh, native people here, which is yeah. my tribes. I, I noticed another thing uh, flying into Phoenix Airport the other day. Oh. What, did I, what did I notice? Yeah, you you noticed uh, that I, I have a couple paintings up uh, uh, on exhibit inside the terminal floor that mm -hmm. just went up. So Sky Harbor, uh, I believe the f a proper name is Phoenix Airport Museum under Sky Harbor Airport here in Phoenix, reached out and wanted to, they were, have, were planning on curating this, this exhibit that just went up maybe a month ago uh, for local uh, mural artists in the valley, which... I think there's only eight of us in that exhibit, and to pick only eight out of nowadays, there's probably 300, 400 mural painters in the city. Mm -hmm. To be in the top eight uh, in their curation is a big honor, and to be in a place like a really busy airport, international airport like Sky Harbor, um, it's been it's it's been great, and it's up for I think until the spring if anybody's flying through. You're you're kind of young for this, but um, you're kind of like a grandfather. <laughs> in, in that subject matter. Oh, yeah? How so? Think about it. Because you're a trailblazer. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's how. Um, when, you're, when you're one of the first and to do it right and educate and care for your community that you have, uh, yeah, you were like a grandfather. Mm. That, that's, a, that's a big, big thing. Pretty proud of you. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Maybe it's the... Man, you're, you're catching up to me. <laughs> yeah. All right, I haven't passed you yet. <laughs> I'd like to thank Breeze for joining us in this podcast. It's a big honor. Uh, he has more to say. I'd like to encourage people to pay attention to him and watch out for some very cool things. And uh, I can see greatness in this young man, uh, especially for the ambassadorship that he's done uh, for his community over here. And for most native tribes as well. They, we need people to stand out. And he's done that. I'd like to encourage you to uh, bring art into your everyday life by going to bluerainprintshop.com. Especially looking for Breeze in bluerainprintshop.com. has some really nice things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh,